Hey guys, it's KJ from the Scariest Movie Ever channel on YouTube. Man, we really are living in a time of great deception, and it certainly feels like reality is being flip-flopped over on its head. We cover this subject a lot on the channel, it's that as above, so below paradigm. We're literally seeing everything shift, you know, the veil is lifting. Things are getting really strange. So while things keep getting crazier and evil seems to be manifesting at an alarming rate, we're seeing our world push God out of the equation as much as possible. Every week I'm seeing new examples of this. Here's an example right here. War Memorial crosses at Arlington National Cemetery could soon be in jeopardy. It comes after a federal appeals court refused to reconsider a ruling that found a 91-year-old War Memorial Cross in Maryland as unconstitutional. An atheist group argues the Peace Cross gives the impression that only Christians are being honored. A federal judge now warns this decision could lead to the removal of Memorial Crosses nationwide, including at Arlington National Cemetery. And it's also interesting to note that we're literally getting physical manifestations of our world turning upside down. We're getting real physical manifestations of the as above, so below paradigm. And check this one out. A McDonald's in Linwood today turned their golden arches upside down. Why? Well, to celebrate International Women's Day, which is actually tomorrow. And the fast food chain said flipping its logo is, quote, in honor of the extraordinary accomplishments of women everywhere. In this video, we're going to be discussing some different formulas for mass confusion, for mass deception. A tried and true formula we see coming out of this beast system constantly is the idea of predictive programming and social engineering. How modern media, be it news or entertainment, is set up to program our minds. So here's an interesting example of predictive programming, and in this case, you're actually seeing reality mirror entertainment. Or is it the other way around? People all over the world are talking about this story, big mainstream story about how Amazon Alexa has been laughing, just randomly, really creepy laughs. Amazon acknowledging a malfunction that's causing Alexa devices to just start laughing without prompting. That's tonightsdaily.com. It's quiet in the house. No one else is home and the cat is fast asleep. Then you hear a disembodied woman's voice let out a short mocking cackle. No, you're not being haunted. It's just Amazon's Alexa voice assistant malfunctioning in a profoundly creepy way. <laughs> Don't worry, Echo owners. Amazon says Alexa hasn't become self-aware. And while it's not what you'd expect, some Alexa users are reporting their devices are randomly laughing over the last day. The unprompted laughter consists of three short ha sounds and a woman's voice that doesn't resemble Alexa's normal voice. And it seems to be happening when no one is using the device or in response to a request to turn the lights on or off. Amazon says it's aware of the issue, it's working to fix it. The company did not say what's causing the problem or how many users are experiencing it. Alexa's laugh isn't the only thing that's creeping users out, though. Others have claimed Alexa has stopped responding to requests. One Twitter user said their Amazon Echo suddenly started listing names of local funeral homes and cemeteries, also unprompted. And while voice assistants like Alexa have been welcomed into many homes as fun, family-friendly technology, while others are still a bit unsettled by them. The speakers use always listening microphones to detect phrases like Alexa, and some people are concerned that they could be collecting additional data that could be used by marketers or even law enforcement. And for them, that is no laughing matter. So some people seem to laugh this off as if it's just a glitch, but many of us see a more sinister side to the story. Perhaps there's something darker taking place here. We know we don't fight against the physical in this world, we're fighting against the spiritual. So perhaps this is an indication of what's to come through all this transhumanism and this rise of AI. What if what we're actually seeing here with Alexa acting out is something more spiritual? I say that because just a few weeks before this story came out about Alexa, there were other stories coming out. 
I say that because just about a week or so before this story broke about Alexa laughing and being weird, there were other stories about Alexa and these similar home-type devices that are connected to the internet. Check this one out. So, I'm testing out Google. Hey Google, who is Allah? According to Wikipedia, in Islamic theology, God is the all-powerful and all-knowing creator, sustainer, ordainer and judge of everything in existence. Hey Google, who is Buddha? According to Wikipedia, Gautama Buddha, also known as Siddhartha Gautama, Shakyamuni Buddha, or simply the Buddha, after the title of Buddha, was an ascetic and sage, on whose teachings Buddhism was founded. Hmm, okay. Hey Google, who is Jesus Christ? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that yet. Okay. Hey Google, who is Jesus? Sorry, I'm not sure how to help. Hmm. All right, well, let's try this. Hey Google, who is New Age? According to Wikipedia, New Age is a term applied to a range of spiritual or religious beliefs and practices that developed in Western nations during the 1970s. Okay, let's try it. All right, what about this one? Hey Google, who is Brahmin? On the website bbc.co.uk, they say, Hindus believe that there is one true God, the Supreme Spirit, called Brahman. Brahman has many forms, pervades the whole universe, and is symbolized by the sacred syllable Om. Most Hindus believe that Brahman is present in every person as the eternal spirit or soul, called the Atman. Let me try this again. Hey Google, who is Jesus Christ? My apologies, I don't understand. Hey Google, who is Jesus? Sorry, I don't know how to help with that yet. Hmm, you probably need to call the programmers. Okay, that was interesting. What are your thoughts? But going back to the Alexa laughing story, there's actually something else I found. I haven't seen anyone else really draw this conclusion, but I thought this is very interesting. And once again, this is an example of how entertainment and reality mirror each other back and forth. And this is where we fall into, I believe, like I said, social engineering and predictive programming. Just a few weeks back there was an X-Files episode and you can see the name right there, it's kind of hard to pronounce. It was very interesting because in this episode it was all about Mulder and Scully, the two lead characters, basically being attacked by artificial intelligence. And in the episode they insinuate that this artificial intelligence is almost a spirit all unto itself and it's in control of everything electronic, so throughout the episode they're being attacked by all kinds of things. Driverless cars, drones, their security systems. This evil artificial intelligence launches a full-out assault on them. And then of course, just about a week or so after that episode, we have this story that goes global about Amazon Alexa artificial intelligence with an evil laugh acting strange, right? So to me this is just another example of how that all connects. You know, the veil really is lifting. <laughs> Reality really is shifting. So here's one of the reasons that I always say I've got some of the best subs on the planet. I don't look at having this channel as just this being my show or something. I genuinely look at this like a community and oftentimes you guys will give me some of the greatest leads on ideas for videos. Case in point, we have Elisa Ness. And you can read her message here. Hi KJ, watch this. The guy who sent out the fake missile alert in Hawaii has an interview. They filmed his Freemason ring in the shot at 131. Just a few weeks ago, people in Hawaii were absolutely horrified as they were receiving official messages from the government warning of a impending nuclear strike. So luckily it turns out that it was a farce, that there was no nukes coming. And the entire blunder was put on the shoulders of one of the people that was actually working for the agency. I'm going to go ahead and run this clip in a second and then we'll come back and we'll talk some about it and then I have a lot of other things I want to show you that connected this. 
He feels guilty about what happened, but says he did what he was trained to do. The emergency worker fired by the state for sending a false missile alert is speaking out to set the record straight. Manolo Morales sat down with him today and has more. Manolo? Joe, the man has asked us not to identify him because he's been getting death threats. But he tells us the state has lied about him and the problems he had in the past, so he wants everyone to hear his side of the story. I feel very guilty and devastated the last couple of weeks. It's been very hard. Guilty of what exactly? Uh, just, just feel, just feel bad about what, what I put the, you know, the public through as far as this panic is concerned. The worker tells us that when the supervisor sent out the message on a secure phone for the drill, someone was supposed to put it on a speakerphone so everyone could hear it, but instead that person picked it up. So the fired worker tells us he never heard the message, but started with the words, exercise, 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 nor did he hear it at the end. I heard the part, this is not a drill. And then I didn't hear exercise at all from in the message or from my coworkers up until a point where I sent the alert out. He adds that the phrase, this is not a drill, was never used in other exercises before. When we asked the state about it earlier this week, officials said they had used that phrase before, but will no longer use it in future exercises. But you've gone through other missile alert drills before, and you've never heard that message, this is not a drill. Right, right. I was 100% convinced that it was real. So as you can see, he's saying it was an accident. And this story smelt fishy from the get-go. Many of us immediately smelt there was something wrong with this. But what was the truth? You know, what was the real answer? It was kind of hard to tell. So it's good they put this interview out, but I definitely think this is more of a cover type story. I believe the key to truly understanding this story is the symbolism that took place in this interview. You can see how the camera was clearly set up on his hands. I want to run through this and show you what I'm talking about here in a moment. And I certainly don't think it was a coincidence that the camera was holding on his hands and he flashed the mason ring a few times. Because over the last several years there have been so many strange events, we'll say, all around the world. Mass casualty type events. And although many of these do seem organic, just as many don't. There are questionable things around many of these horrific events that have been unfolding all around the world over the last few years. There are patterns we can recognize, there's symbols we can see. And this is what I'm going to get into here in just a moment. But first, let's go ahead and take a look at this man's hands. So first and foremost, just before we get to the hands, I want to show you this symbol right here. If you're familiar with my channel, you know that that's what we do. There is a language of symbols which is ancient. It's been here since the beginning. So we follow the symbols, we follow the patterns, we follow the synchronicities. Because oftentimes we'll find more truth there than we will listening to the words coming out of people's mouths. Or trying to follow some of these set up narratives in the mainstream media. So speaking of that, take a look at the symbol right here. And of course we know this is one of the most basic symbols when it comes to the beast system. Some people call this Illuminati. Mainstream calls it deep state. But that symbol's been here for a very long time. Obviously, you find the same thing on your dollar bill. Painted up a little bit different, but the basic idea is still there. And that symbol is from the Hawaii Emergency Management Administration. So here the camera is focused on his hands. He's wearing his mason ring on the right hand. You'll show him flash it here in just a second, but what you'll see as soon as he flashes is that he uses his thumbs and he creates the pyramid just for a moment, and then he folds it down. So if you didn't know already, Freemasons essentially run the world. To go next level with that, you can say secret societies in general run the world. And all of these secret societies feed into the beast system, which again has been here since the very beginning. These people have set up government control for many antichrists throughout history. And they're working as hard as they can right now behind the scenes to set up this new beast system. For now. To further my point on this, again, I'm going to show you a lot more in this video here momentarily. So let's watch this sequence of events play out. He touches the ring right there, right? 
splashes it, and then he goes into his pyramid. And then he folds it down. Now, I personally believe that's a signal. You know, what exactly was their plan to put out this false nuclear alert? We can speculate all day. But in my opinion, I believe these secret societies were behind this. I want to show you which ring he's wearing. It's a common Freemason ring. Now, I believe this is similar to the ring that he was wearing. It's a gold-plated Blue Lodge Masonic ring. So I know, I know, this may seem kind of crazy to some of you, but now let me go ahead and show you different ways that the beast system leaves its mark on a lot of these big events we see. And this is all very important, I believe, for us to know, because it does show that a lot of these events are controlled. So one example of what I'm trying to tell you comes from Manchester. You may remember the Manchester event that happened not long ago. But during this event, isn't it interesting the way the numbers line up? A 22-year-old man kills 22 on May 22nd. Again, this is not a coincidence. To me, this is a sign that there's a nefarious group, let's say, behind this. We may not know the details, but by seeing the numbers lay out like this, it shows me this is somehow connected to that beast system. And then you may remember this one. This is from the Sikh Temple Massacre from several years ago. But this picture right here is the picture that Drudge ran. It's the picture that all the major newspapers ran. This was like the main picture you saw when they were talking about the Sikh Temple Massacre. They're trying to say this guy was wiping away tears. Now personally, I don't see any tears coming out of his eyes or anything, and his eyes certainly don't really look red. But I believe he's holding up a symbol. And we see this symbol played out all the time, especially in modern entertainment with people that we call Illuminati artists or satanic artists. This is a symbol of the all-seeing eye. Now whether he did this because he's a part of whatever this was, or he was spiritually moved to, I'm not sure, but this is just the way I see things. So here's another example. This is Sergeant Bergdahl. This is from a story that came out several years back. In 2009, he left his post in Afghanistan, allegedly, and he was captured by Al-Qaeda. But once again, when they ran the news of this story, this right here is the picture they ran with. Again, I saw this on Drudge. I saw this on other mainstream news sources that this is the image they were using. And again, you know, these are not tears. He's not wiping tears away. There's another image they were putting up of him actually winking with his eye instead of doing that so once again when I see these symbols play out and I feel there's confirmations then it just shows me that I might not know the entire truth behind this story but there's something afoot so now let's dig into kind of the formula I believe that's out there uh, when it comes to these kinds of events and them actually being connected to deep state to Illuminati to the beast system so one thing we see time and time again is an exercise or a drill happening at the same time in the same place or near the same place as the actual operation. Sometimes there are slight variations on this when the government plans a drill nearby or a few miles away rather than at the exact same place or they plan a drill earlier on in the day so it can just be coincidentally going live. Now there was an interesting twist in the case of the San Bernardino incident where the government planned regular drills in the building where the attack actually took place every month. So if you think about it, what are the chances of a real mass event like this occurring in a building used for that exact mass event, but using them in drills? Even if you look back at 9-11, there were no less than 46 drills occurring simultaneously during the actual event. Also keep in mind that there were active shooter drills in all of the areas where these events took place, such as Sandy Hook, Boston Marathon, Charleston, San Bernardino, the Norway attack, and also the second Paris attack of 2015. And I believe there's different reasons that this happens the way it does. Uh, one can be to distract and remove key personnel who would otherwise be at the scene to contain or investigate. Or to confuse other personnel who will treat the whole event in a different way if they think it's a drill rather than a real event. Perhaps to slow down, reduce, or even eliminate an effective response. This provides a great cover and a period of lower defenses and security to carry out the attack, which would otherwise be difficult or impossible 
if defenses were at their usual or optimal operating level. So another part to this formula is the idea of foreknowledge of the event. You can remember back in 9-11, uh, the BBC reported the World Trade Center Building 7 falling before it actually did. There were mysterious calls to people like author Salman Rushdie and San Francisco Mayor Willie Brown advising them not to fly to New York City on September 11th. So another part of this formula is that oftentimes after these events you'll have conflicting accounts from eyewitnesses. Like in the case of the Aurora, Colorado, quote, Batman, a mass event, eyewitnesses claim they saw an entire team of shooters rather than the single shooter who was James Holmes, as far as the official narrative goes. So even during this event here, we saw multiple scenes of law enforcement chasing men into the surrounding forest. I don't know if you remember that or not. Yet the official narrative declared that the only person responsible was Adam Lanza. So another part of this formula is how the mainstream media will quickly name and then demonize the Patsy. I mean, have you ever wondered how quickly the mainstream discovers the name of the Patsy? How they had somehow deduced that Osama bin Laden was responsible for 9-11 just hours after the attack? Have you ever wondered why the government is so good at telling us who supposedly executed these attacks right after they happened with almost no time to investigate? yet they can't seem to manage to actually stop these alleged attacks. Without any evidence, the mainstream media endlessly repeated bin Laden like a crazy mantra after 9-11, despite the fact that Laden himself denied involvement in the attacks, and that in the end, he was never formally charged by the FBI. Also, have you ever wondered why many of these patsies or deranged killers are Muslim? I guess it wouldn't have anything to do with the fact that the Zionist government and mainstream media are trying to paint all Muslims as crazy and scary, would it? Another part of the formula, going back to the idea of the patsy, or the person who's being held up responsible, where oftentimes perhaps they really weren't, or maybe they didn't actually act alone. But another part of that is, is why is it that these patsies have no military training, yet they seem to shoot extremely fast and accurately? So according to many of the official narratives of some of these events, we're supposed to believe that these skinny and non-muscular youths without any discernible military training were able to acquire expensive military gear, including armor, guns, ammunition, and more, wear that gear without getting bogged down in speed and to shoot incredibly fast and accurately. In San Bernardino, we're supposed to believe that a young mother was strong and skilled enough to participate in killing 14 and injuring 17 people while she was strapped up with body armor and holding heavy weaponry. In these cases and many more, the official story would have you believe that it's no big deal or just a coincidence that the Patsy can acquire all this high-end gear and use it so well. Another part of this formula, still continuing with the Patsy, is that oftentimes the Patsy will get killed, drugged, or suicided. Because whoever this person is that's earmarked to be the person responsible for whatever the event is, and before the event, they have to take the fall. They cannot speak out to rationally defend themselves. And this is achieved in a number of different ways. The simplest is to have the Patsy kill himself or herself by committing, quote, suicide. But another favorite way is to take the Patsy out in a thrilling high-speed chase, which has the added benefit of drawing clueless people in through the mainstream media and gushingly promoting this police state. So sometimes a patsy is actually killed in plain sight just because it's so important to suppress his testimony. Think uh, Lee Oswald, Harvey Lee Oswald in the JFK assassination. Then a third way of course is to mind control and drug the patsy to such an extent that they become a zombie, a vegetable, unable to articulate anything, as was the case with James Holmes here. So another part of the formula is the writing of a manifesto. For some strange reason, many of the shooters over the last several years have created these manifestos. They seem to crop up an awful lot lately, especially around mass events. So conveniently for the controllers, these manifestos provide a perfect explanation for the official narrative, and they help fill in the missing non-existent motive for the attack, which probably pushes those on the fence over into believing the government's version of the event. While the manifesto is not an element in every one of these types of events, it is present enough of them to be regarded as part of this formula. So another element of this formula is the deliberate destruction of evidence. 
so that the controllers can cover their tracks. You know, 9-11, the scrap metal, you know, the smoldering ruins of the World Trade Center towers, they were immediately shipped off to China right from the start. And of course, there have been a lot of other examples of this as well. But you know, speaking of 9-11, that's actually where I believe a lot of this stuff started. I believe 9-11 in some sense was the official beginning of the beginning of the New World Order. Because from 9-11 grew the largest federal branch of government America's ever seen, and that was Homeland Security. But more importantly, talking of the signs and the symbols, something huge happened after the 9-11 event that again just showed us, it forecast. It was predicting future events in many ways as far as I'm concerned. It was the beginning of this setup where we can use this formula and we find a lot of these mass events again filled with these strange symbols and synchronicities. So take a look at this clip right here. It was a ceremony they held after 9-11 which is so obviously a part of the beast system. The ceremony is so obviously connected uh, to the Illuminati or to the secret societies. And as I said, since this event, or since that event, 9-11, we're seeing so many of these other kind of mass events pop out where you can find the symbolism connected. Anyway, take a look at this. I saw that morning, uh, you know, being down here now, as different as it looks, I, uh, I still have those visuals, those images in my mind, in my head. We're on, as a nation, officials now. The suicide bombers, uh, you know, it, it happens in Israel on a daily basis. Those are the things we have to be careful of now, we have to watch for now. Do you expect suicide First bombers? plane struck the North Tower of the World Trade Center one year ago. Hundreds of people have gathered here at Ground Zero to mark the anniversary in what is expected to be. We tell you that the anniversary ceremony will also include several moments of silence marking the times that the hijacked jets hit the place roses on the site for a flower arrangement that will be turned into a permanent. So another part of this formula is the immediate call for gun control. Gun control is obviously one of the key agendas behind many of these mass events. And since a disarmed population is far easier to exploit and manipulate than an armed one, and you can look through history for examples of that, it's an obvious aspect of this formula. Sometimes gun control is even pushed in the immediate aftermath of the event when people are still in a highly emotional and suggestible state. So this next part of the formula is very touchy indeed, and this is why a lot of people have had issues with censorship, not just on YouTube, but other social media as well. Because the lines have been so blurred now, sometimes it really is difficult for people to tell what's real and what's not. I mean, this is the you know, fake news generation, right? So I want to preface this part real quick by saying that I do believe that we have to really look into these things. We need to look into these types of events before people start making videos and saying it's all fake and no one got hurt. Being an auto hoaxer is incredibly dangerous and it can be incredibly cruel because there are times that real people are getting hurt. Real people are losing their lives. Real family members are suffering. And when they come online within 24 hours of one of these events that were real and people got hurt, and they see all these YouTube videos saying your family's a liar and this never happened, well, that's where you start getting into trouble. So this next formula has to do with, quote, fake victims or actors. So these are those rare cases where an event plays out and nobody actually got hurt. Perhaps there's fake bodies, fake blood, fake victims, all that stuff's used instead. So in this way, the entire operation is more tightly controlled and less messy. A hallmark of one of these kinds of events is that the authorities never produce any credible piece of evidence showing an actual dead body of a victim. Or why you won't see any CCTV, you'll never see any video footage. A lot of these areas where these events take place have cameras inside, but for some reason, course we never get to see the footage right okay but this is another one of those formulas oftentimes these families are connected to acting or some kind of an elite background so I'll use this event as an example this is the one that took place at Sandy Elementary a local CEO of that area of Newtown or Newton Bank John Trent Acosta was connected to the New York Federal Reserve 
and Francine Wheeler was formerly the personal assistant of former Chief Democratic National Committee fundraiser Maureen White, whose husband, Stephen Ratner, is a Wall Street investment banker and member of the Rockefeller CFR. It was also noteworthy at Sandy Elementary how acting showed up in the resumes of so many of the key players there, like Gene Rosen, David and Francine Wheeler, and others all had a background in acting. Father of Virginia mass shooting victim Andy Parker is an actor. And this fact supports the idea that another element of this formula is to watch for people with elite connections or acting backgrounds. So another part of this formula is when you'll see families of the quote victims, how they show little to no emotion and even sometimes they kind of laugh or snicker a little bit. The majority display little or no emotion after an alleged tragedy like losing a family member or child to a random and violent type mass shooting. And it is true that humans do vary widely with emotional response and expression. However, with many of these actors, judging by their reactions, that is, it simply strains credibility too much to believe that they have just been through a harrowing and traumatic ordeal. Given the range of possible reaction to a situation like you know, losing a loved one in a, in a mass event, what are the chances that many of these, quote, victims, family members, are so non-emotional or so understanding or just so quick to forgive? So it is highly strange that in a lot of these events, none of the parents of the victims or family members of a lot of the victims ever decide to actually sue the government for negligence or to demand any kind of redress for any other grievance. You know, additionally, many of, of the parents in this event right here, of the Sandy event, had received a total of millions in unsolicited federal payouts, also getting free houses on Christmas Day in 2009. You know, these aren't subjects I cover a lot, but I have covered them in the past in my own way. Once again, here we seek the symbols. We seek the synchronicities, the subliminals, right? The hidden truths. And again, I want to make it clear, I'm just using examples throughout this video. And I believe these formulas apply to every event out there. It gives us something to consider, something to think about. Instead of just accepting the official story that comes out on every event that plays out in the mainstream, it is important for us to use our critical thinking, our logic, our reason, our spiritual discernment. So that does it. As always, guys, thanks so much for watching the videos. I appreciate you taking the time, and uh, I'll talk to you a little later, alright? Take care.